Let's start with the simple circle of radius r. Its area is well known, pi r square. Now, to prove that, we can begin by dividing the circle into several concentric rings with a varying radius and a constant thickness dr. For better approximations in finding the area of the circle, the value of dr should be very small. Let's isolate one such ring of radius smaller and thickness dr. While dr is extremely small in reality, well, close to zero, but for visualization purposes, I am going to show it with finite thickness. What I am interested in is the area of this ring dA, and that would be the product of its circumference 2 pi r and its thickness dr. Well, the total area of the circle is a summation of the areas of all these rings. Mathematically, this means integrating 2 pi r dr from r equals 0 to capital R. But for now, let's just focus on this ring. Remember that this circle is just the 2D projection of the sphere in 3D. And in the same way, these concentric rings represent the 2D projections of the concentric spherical shells. Now, for a sphere of radius smaller, its volume element dv is analogous to dA. In the case of dv, the formula would be the product of the surface area of sphere and its thickness dr. Again, if you want to compute the volume of the sphere, we integrate dv from r equals 0 to capital R. Let's hang on to dA and dv for a moment. Now that we understand how to find the volume of sphere in 2D or 3D cases, let's introduce some notation to generalize this further to generalize to n dimensions. In 2D, the area of a ring is dA, which I'll now call as dv2 where the subscript 2 represents the 2D space. Similarly, in 3D, the volume of the spherical shell is dv3, where 3 represents 3D space. Now, notice an interesting thing here. Geometrically, the form of pi represents the total angle sweep by the boundaries of the shape around its center. For the circle, which is also a 2D sphere, this 2 pi represents the total angle sweep by the boundary of the circle around its center. And in case of a 3D sphere, the total angle is 4 pi steradian, representing the complete solid angle around its center. Let's call these angles omega, and the subscript shows the dimensions in which it resides in. To extend these formulas to n dimensions, notice that the power of r is always 1 less than the dimension number, which seems obvious as the volume of n dimensional sphere is proportional to the nth power of its radius. In general, for an n dimensional sphere, all of the work will be in the search for this omega n, which represents the angular sweep of the boundary in an n-dimensional space. Once we find the omega, the net volume of the hypersphere will be the integration of dv, where r goes from 0 to capital R. Even with the help of this formula, we can find out the total surface area of an n-dimensional sphere. The concept of the volume of a hypersphere is beautifully linked to this Gaussian integral, a cornerstone of mathematics whose value is square root of pi. Grant Sanderson provides an elegant explanation of the solution to this integral and the origin of the pi factor. Analytically, the solution involves squaring the integral and then transforming it into the radial coordinates, which leads to a simplified form. And the value of this integral found to be pi. Notice how the first integral resembles the total angular sweep of a circle. So the first integral is basically the omega 2. And when we observe the second integral, it can be further transformed into a gamma function by making a substitution r square equals to t. And this integration gives me the expression of omega 2. And in the same way, we can find the expression of omega 3. For this, we just have to evaluate the value of i to the power 3. This substitution redefines the integral in terms of a function that generalizes the factorial to continuous values. And this allows us to extend the concept of volume to an n-dimensional sphere. In general, the value of omega n can be extracted by evaluating the value of i to the power n. Now, from this omega n expression, I guess finding the volume of a hypersphere will be easier. And after rearranging some terms, I would get the expression of the volume and the surface area of a hypersphere.